All right. Good evening, parents. Welcome to this evening's Laguna Beach High School Rising Breakers virtual FAQ. Hope we're not giving anybody any anxiety of being back in Zoom rooms this evening, but we are very excited to have you um, as uh, participants in this process. Our goal tonight is to just really generally inform uh, parents about the, the changes that will impact students as they transition into the 23-24 school year. Um, as a note, we are uh, recording this meeting and we will also be um, posting this as a resource on our website and sharing it out with our uh, uh, feeder school at, up at Thurston so that we have uh, all the information accessible to parents, students, and anybody else that may be curious. Um, so I'd like to just jump in and start with uh, meeting our, our team this evening. And you can see that in our, uh, as acting as our host and, and being a participant in this meeting is um, myself. My name is Dr. Jason Allman. I'm the proud principal of Laguna Beach High School. My colleagues, Mr. Miller and Mr. Carlson will be doing, uh, joining me in the presenting this evening. Um, athletic director Selby is not currently with us. She's uh, accepting award with our football team who are CIF champions this season at the city council meeting this evening. Um, but we do have our amazing uh, counseling crew here. Miss Rosa, counselor for A through F students, Alexis Mealy, counselor for G through L students, Mr. Banducci, counselor for M through R students, and, and of course, Miss Pallon, counselor for S through Z students. In addition to that, we're also lucky enough to have some really um, impactful teachers from our campus representing tonight, helping us out in our, our, our Q and A uh, option for the, in the chat. So if you have any uh, if if you have any questions in the Q and A, please pose them there, and and our participants will uh, help um, answer those. Uh, but it's important to note that we uh, are trying to provide you with a lot of information this evening. So it might be a best approach to just sit, listen, and there will be options for uh, questions being asked and addressed. Uh, both during the webinar, but also after too, and we'll share that resource with you. Um, so I'd like to welcome Miss Greco behind the scenes and Miss Kay from our English department. So we have math representation and English representation on here. They're also an integral part of our conversations with students and staff around scheduling and mapping out our next steps ahead. Um, so you can see uh, on our screen what we look like in Bitmoji land, but here it's important for you to put an actual name to the face. So this is all uh, of us and um, we're here to help support, answer questions and uh, participate in the education and development of your young adult. So we are very appreciative of allowing uh, you allowing us to have that opportunity with your students. Um, so now that you have kind of some faces to all the names, we're going to go ahead and get to the content of our program. And it's our hope that we just give a general idea around what the day in the life of a high school student looks like, cover some academic opportunities that are offered um, on our campus and outside of our campus in our great, greater school community for students, uh, talk about supports that you as parents may seek out, but more importantly, your students. We want your students and you to be aware of really about our vision from the student perspective around culture and climate, and then some important upcoming events around the registration uh, process as your student readies themselves for the 23-24 school year. So a general overview around the day in the life of a high school student is as, as we look into 23-24 school year, we're gonna be transitioning into a eight period day now, it's important to note that when we transition into an eight period day, that the, the gist behind this move was to not force the hand of students to take eight classes in their schedule. It was to provide an opportunity for variety and options for students during their four years in high school. So from going from a six period day structure to an eight period day structure, 
really gives us an opportunity to provide students the option of, of going from 24 opportunities for course selection to 32 opportunities of course selection during their four years in high school. That was an important uh, uh, point of feedback from students um, to really allow some balance and variety in their high school time so that they could take courses that are of interest to them balance that with the many activities that we find our students are participating in outside of their regular class schedule. And really, hope our hope is to kind of broaden the horizon for a student and allow them the opportunity that they have currently in middle school of exploratory learning in high school. So we hope that our students kind of find some confidence around those additional opportunities to have some variance in what their schedule will look like from year to year. Um, obviously, uh, our activities, school sports, clubs, things of that nature are really a, an integral part of your students' development. We not only wanna educate our high school students and young adults that we're lucky enough to work with, we want to help them build some really essential life skills that will help them well beyond uh, the, their high school experience. So our goal is obviously educate our students and have them ready for life after high school, but we also want them to have developed life skills um, with your help that revolve around self-advocacy, being articulate, being collaborative, um, and creating a lot of great experiences and memories for your student. Um, I think if you talk to any uh, current student or graduated student from Laguna Beach High School, they will talk first about their memories and their own participation and um, impact that they had on their high school experience before they start talking about curriculum. So we wanna acknowledge that and continue to work around that too. Additionally, we want uh, to talk a little bit about the general overview for athletics. So uh, I'm sorry, academics. So I'm gonna allow my colleague, Mr. Miller to cover that information. Yeah, so we have our core classes English, math, science, social sciences, PE, world languages, and then our electives, our visual performing arts, and our uh, continuing, uh, excuse me, our CTE classes, uh, career and technical education, as we talk about those, as well as some of our interdisciplinary classes, MUN, AER, I'm throwing out a lot of acronyms, uh, Model United Nations, um, authentic exploratory research, opportunities for students to really as Dr. Elliman said, broaden their horizon and explore kind of the opportunities that are out there that we can offer. It also would include any of our CCA College and Career Advantage courses uh, offered through our partnership with the Capo uh, School District. Um, we'll talk just really briefly about letter grades and GPA in the sense that um, our students' GPA, that becomes a number that many people get hung up on. Um, it's a very simple calculated score based on student grades um, throughout their four years in high school. A is worth four points, B is three points, C is two points, D is one point, and our honors and AP classes all give a, a grade bump. So I, they increase that number by one for those classes. Um, our counselors will go into greater detail as they meet with students throughout the fall about the GPA, how it's calculated, and where it becomes impactful as a student transitions on to their post-secondary options. We have a variety of academic special programs. I kind of talked about a few of those, but we have uh, nine different pathways, career and technical education pathways that we promote on our campus and to our students. Uh, that's our dance program, our engineering program, our computer science program. There's nine of those healthcare that we promote on campus. Um, and then through our partnership with the CCA uh, and Capistrano Unified, I believe there are 11 different sectors that then there is a variety of different programs that we encourage our students to explore. Uh, Dr. Allman touched on the block schedule in our all period day. Uh, we'll look at a sample schedule in a, in a couple minutes, but what that means for our students is really that 
uh, all of every day, our schedule will start at the exact same time, 8.30 in the morning, and our dismissal will be now at 3.30 in the afternoon. Now, we'll look at the schedule with our eight period day and our athletics classes will fall in that last period of the day. So many of our students academically will complete their day right around where they are now um, at about two o'clock. Our anchor day on Friday, a student will experience all eight classes. And we do that so that teachers have the opportunity to meet at the end of the week, wrap up as they go into a weekend if there's anything that needs to be touched. But also it allows our staff an opportunity to do some professional development and to get into their professional learning communities and discuss student success and how to continue to support our students. Another opportunity for our students to explore outside of the high school is through our dual enrollment opportunities. Um, those are opportunities that we offer through uh, an agreement with Irvine Valley College and getting into those courses. Um, but also students are free to take classes at any uh, community college. There's some paperwork and some organization that just needs to go on with that with our counselors. Last and last but not least on this page, um, our students in ninth and 10th grade will experience the iReady exam between two to three times each year. Uh, it, that allows our staff, our English and math teachers to monitor students' progress uh, to see where their successes are and where there might be some learning gaps and to be able to go back and retarget that learning throughout those years. Um, for the 11th grade, we have our CASP, our state testing, um, that, you, that occurs in the spring, only in their 11th grade year. Um, as we talked a little bit about those, those classes, one thing that you'll see come up this year um, is a term around this open enrollment course, all right? These are courses that are going to be within our bell schedule. Um, they may occur inside the bell schedule, may occur outside the bell schedule, but they're courses of service or uh, extended learning or um, a showcase of our student talents here at school. So you'll see theater one and two, uh, wind ensemble, string ensemble, those can be taken. They, Many of those may be within the bell schedule. Some of those may not be in the bell schedule, just based on um, how our master schedule is constructed, based on student need and, and where those courses lay in trying to support as many students. Um, we'll go to the next slide, Dr. Allman. And I know I touched on it, but here's a sample of our bell schedule. And what I want you to notice is that the majority of our academic courses will be in the first three blocks of the day, the orange and red, the blue and yellow, and the blue and green blocks. The majority of our academic classes will be in there. It doesn't mean that there will not be academic classes in the seventh and eighth period. There will be, but those periods will also be where our athletics falls. So you'll see students would be released every day to go to their athletics at about 210 to be able to go participate, practice, and take care of those needs. If your student's not in athletics, there are academic opportunities available in those courses. Uh, there would not be any singleton courses that are offered there that would conflict or compete with an athletic competition schedule. Last but not least, I wanna give you a couple sample examples, or excuse me, sample schedule examples here uh, for our students. So for our freshmen, if they're in athletics, you'll notice the schedule on the far left uh, has football in those periods seventh and eighth, but that student has a free period one. We would encourage that student to take advantage of that time to visit our math or our writing lab here on campus, or visit our library and be able to use paper as a resource, an online resource for some additional tutoring, for extending some learning, or just to be able to connect with a teacher who may be available during that period. You'll notice that open enrollment class. The open enrollment class in this schedule is the student's journalism class. They're not an athlete, so they don't have athletics, but they have PE in that seventh period window, along with their other core classes, their English nine, algebra, integrated science, and their world language is French. And then I just wanted to show an example of our junior open enrollment schedule, how even our juniors can be exposed and have a variety of courses in their schedule 
while still having a free period at the end of the day. I think Thank you, Mr. Uh, Miller. Yep. Um, so I hope you kind of are be beginning to see the concept and thought around um, our transition into the eight period schedule. It isn't a giant shift uh, from the block models that we've had. As a matter of fact, it kind of provides uh, what educators might call a sweeter spot in the length of a block schedule. Um, but that, of course, kind of varies by uh, teacher and uh, department. Um, but another thing that we really wanted to highlight was uh, enhancing supports that we have for students here at school. So uh, I wanted to spend a little bit of time of covering the general philosophy behind uh, supports as we move into the 23-24 school year. And I'd say the biggest impact around that based on student feedback was around specifically the time that tutorial allows us to help support students. So currently our tutorial schedule is uh, a tied to a specific period on any given school day during our block schedule. Next year, that will not be the case. Uh, we got a lot of conversation and feedback from both staff and students around the topic of tutorial, and we really want to maximize the value of the time spent in tutorial. Um, tutorial will occur, as you saw, during the school day a little bit differently and later on in their school day than it does this year. Um, but the difference next year will be that students and teachers will be able to proactively assign how a tutorial looks for students. A successful student will have the opportunity to really drive their own kind of destination for tutorial and end up where they want and need the support or they want maybe some acceleration opportunities or just time with a teacher to get clarity on a specific concept that they might not be fully understanding. In addition to that, if a teacher has a concern, um, Ms. Greco, for example, in math has a concern or an upcoming exam that she wants to target a, a number of students with a specific gap that they need filled, she will be able to invite the, uh, the student into a specific tutorial on a specific and designated time during the four tutorials that occur in a five-day school week. Uh, five-day school week. Um, obviously, that's a big change. We'll have some uh, automated check-in and check-out system that will be tied to um, uh, student smartphones. We'll have QR codes, some real simple way to have students check in and out and be accountable for that time. Um, we want we will obviously hold uh, the students accountable and and re really push home the importance of that time and how it should be utilized. Um, and. Again, the consistent theme and message from students was that, hey, I really enjoy tutorial when I have the opportunity to kind of select or be in a place that where I deem it appropriate and I need help. Likewise, teachers want to have that ability too. So that'll be a big change for the tutorial time, and we hope that it's more impactful and valuable in a student a student's learning process. Additionally, we still will have regular uh, opportunities for students to get support in the in a lab environment for writing lab and, and math. Um, you may have noticed in the sample schedules, I'll go back to them briefly, but you may have noticed there's some free periods, right, where we want students to sleep. We want students to be able to do their work that they um, need to get done in a, in a, you know, concerted time. Well, in that case, we, we want especially incoming freshmen and their families to be mindful that when school opens, school is open. So if you don't have a class, but school is open, you have a place. So it's important to note that students can access the library, they can access lab time, they can also access other uh, spots on campus where they can get supports. Um, you know, we have amazing supports in academics and social emotional supports with our counseling team. Um, but there are also other really more organic supports around campus. Sometimes it's peer groups. Sometimes it's just a connecting with a campus supervisor. So we will have a campus open and accessible to students as appropriate during the school day, whether they have a uh, whether they have a specific assigned class or not. Um, I also want to make sure that uh, you know, and we've been really uh, benefited by this issue of our expanded counseling team. 
we're really allowing uh, our counseling team to connect with students in a way they haven't been able to in the past, just because we have the addition of Miss Mealy here that creates a fourth counselor for us. So it really has allowed us to do some more dynamic and impactful things for students, not only on the learning front, but also just in their general wellness. And I think I think my colleagues would agree it kind of helps us be a lot more well in the work that we do too, because we're really uh, able to be impactful and uh, and work with students in a, in a really impactful way. Um, it's also important to note, and I don't know if parents and students are really a hundred percent aware of this at the most at the times they may need it most. But we have uh, some amazing online resources, um, and one is uh, depicted here. And it's it's paper. Um, and that it can be found in a student's beach port. And what it is, is it's really live time tutoring uh, for any and all subjects that we offer here on, on campus. Um, so uh, you're talking everything from help with a math problem, walking through a passage that maybe a student is writing. Uh, there are a wide variety of supports and direct tutoring from this uh, service and platform uh, called PAPER. In addition to that, you'll also find other resources with us in our weekly messages. Um, I'm I'm 100% certain that you're aware of Parent Square, but if you're not on it, either you know via email or on your phone feed, um, you please get that and get it up and running while you're um, transitioning into the the high school environment because we do do a lot of communication in that way. And needless to say, teachers use Canvas on a regular basis to communicate information and important uh, uh, documents around their curriculum to their students. At this point in time, I'm really excited for you to hear from uh, Mr. Carlson uh, to talk a lot about the, the culture and climate work that we are, are doing with the help of some really important uh, student groups on our campus. So Mr. Carlson. Unmute. The one job that I had, Dr. A, the one job. Good evening, everyone. And I and I wanted to thank you guys for joining us in your busy evening. Um, everyone here that is hosting this Zoom is also a parent. And I can tell you that one of the things I love most about uh, Laguna Beach High School is the care and support that uh, we have as a part of our culture and our climate on our campus. We have adults that absolutely take great care of kids. And as a parent, there's nothing more valuable than knowing that when you drop off your student, the people on campus take that responsibility very seriously. When it comes to our students, we're very proud of the work that we've done with culture and climate on our campus. Uh, LBHS students have a very unique opportunity to find their passion and their voice while they spend four years with us. We like to call this passion and voice the student's legacy in their four years that they spend with us, um, whether it be by finding their passion through one of our arts programs or participating in an athletic team or getting involved in one of our 50 clubs on campus. Um, whatever it might be, and as we transition to this eight period schedule, giving students even more access to chase those passions is extremely important to your, your students' experience while they're here. And we like to talk about this idea of legacy as in four years, a Laguna Beach High School student will have the opportunity for their voice to be heard, to participate, to get involved. And so that when they leave as a breaker graduate, not only have they left their mark on the Guna Beach High School for classes to come after them, but they'll leave with a lifetime of memories and learning as well. So that is something that drives us um, here at, at the high school. And we are excited to have your children join us um, on that journey. Um, so one of the things that we've really focused on this year is developing groups where students' voices are heard. And those student voices drive the changes that we make on a yearly basis um, at our school. Um, through student leadership, we have a student senate. We have a brand new group of leaders on campus that not only are, 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 have a voice in the types of activities that we offer, but more importantly, 
are shaping how we make sure that every student on campus feels like they are a part of the, their cult, our culture, a part of our community, and they feel supported no matter what their background, no matter what their identity, and we're very proud of the work that that group is doing. So I, I want to turn it over to uh, Dr. Alleman as we go on to the next slide, and he's going to talk about one of our other very, very important goals that we have with your students as they arrive on campus um, in August. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. Appreciate that. We're really excited around the work that we're doing with students around culture and climate. Um, I think our ultimate goal, kind of like platinum standard, would be really to have each and every student on our campus articulate specifically the kind of legacy they want to leave for their little younger sibling that's going to come here later, or even just when you return to campus and show your kids where you went to high school years and years away from now. Um, so we'll work towards that. We're lucky that we have, we're lucky that we have a lot of great students that are really um, open thinkers, collaborative workers. Um, and ult ultimately, that's what we want for our students and their experience here. You heard, you heard me open with that. Um, we not only want to educate your student, but we want to build, uh, help them build their life skills that they're going to use uh, well beyond high school and into college career. And um, we're excited about that opportunity. And uh, I love being able to spend really four essential and important years with students to, to help, uh, help them develop that. So the, our ultimate goal is to create responsible young adults. We have a lot of opportunity and challenge our students with community service, thinking beyond their classrooms, right? Getting involved in athletics, clubs, extracurricular activities. But I think more importantly, what we really have a, a good system in place that challenges students to build uh, life outside of their daily routine around stewardship. Um, we live in a remarkable community and work in a remarkable community, and we want to make sure that students understand how important the community is or, uh, and how they can give back for that. We also want your students to inject themselves and insert themselves where they need to, when they need to. Um, I tell my own kids sometimes like, hey, there could be a room full of adults that you're waiting around to act like an adult and advocate for you, but no one can advocate and support your, you better than yourself. And we really wanna help students build that skill. And I know as a parent of uh, high school students, I have three students all in college now, but as I navigated high school, it was really difficult for me as a parent to take that step back at times and let students, my students, my own personal students sort things out and figure things out on their own, or at least start to. There were times where I had to jump in and insert myself, but we really wanna help build that skill around advocacy and assertiveness with your student, um, because that's an important lifelong skill in everything that we do when we leave our house to, to go to work. I mean, those are important things. And more, mo most importantly for us is, we want a safe, supportive, and fun environment for your students where they're going to create a lot of memories. And uh, I, we want most of them to be good, but we also want some of those challenging ones to be empowering for them and, and uh, get them through the other side of that and really feel empowered and confident in, in their time here and beyond. Um, I want to make sure uh, as I close out our time together, that I really outline clearly some of the important upcoming events. And again, this information will be uh, available to your friends and colleagues that weren't able to be in attendance tonight. And you could also help us spread the word. We always appreciate that. But our upcoming events include next week. So we have a Thursday night big event from five to seven, and that's our eighth grade family night. And um, it gives us a really good opportunity to showcase all the many things that we have on our campus and build awareness around that so that your students can make the best decisions about what classes they register for, what coursework is interesting to them, but also the stuff outside of class, sports, athletics activities, um, visual and performing arts, pathway classes, career classes, and of course, clubs. It's important to note that we have a lot of clubs on our campus, but I always tell students if we don't have a club that they fit in, that they always have an opportunity to look for a club advisor and develop that club themselves on this campus. We'll definitely help them through that process. 
Um, it's important that your student is ready for our high school counselors to visit the middle school on March 13th. That's coming up within a week. Um, and then, of course, they'll return to circle back with your students for course registration on March 29th and March 30th. So that's an exciting time. And it's like kind of opens up the new chapter for all of our eighth grade students to get ready and hopefully excited about high school. In addition to that, we are going to fast forward all through the wonderful events and activities you have planned for the summer and get you to August 10th and 11th, where that's where our breaker days take place. Um, that's usually the first kind of dip your toe in the water event for the 23-24 school year for all of our students. So we're hoping you can kind of do a save the date on that. And then, of course, our orientation days for both freshmen and their parents. So this is a great day for you to be a participant with your student in their first kind of high school experience before school even starts. So please make a note that freshman orientation will take place from 9 to 1130 on Monday, August 14th, and you are invited um, to our parent seminar so that we can kind of not only cover a lot of the information that we covered here today, but kind of go in a, a deeper dive on that for you um, so that we hope that you get excited and ready to support your student in their high school journey. So after that is about a week and a half where you have to get ready and anticipate, do all that fun school shopping, get the kids those nice clothes. And then we start school on August 24th. That's our first day of school for the 23-24 school year. I think we had a few questions going through the, the Q&A, but I also wanted to be mindful of our your support with our LBHS PTA. This is where you can find uh, how to become a member and um, really support our PTA. They have uh, stipends for teachers, our campus, uh, different campus programs, but they also have really neat student grants. So students pre present grant ideas to our high school PTA, and they um, are funded by the, the funds that our PTA raises through membership. Membership, I think, is only $15. Um, that I don't know if they have increased it. I know they were talking about it, but please join uh, PTA, LBHS, and uh, help support your students and our, our teaching and faculty here. Um, so thank you. I hope you're feeling all right about our uh, pending school year, all the changes that we have. We anticipate that this will kind of be the kind of the um, consistent schedule moving forward. I know the running joke is like, I've been here six years. And I think we've had six different schedules. Um, I feel like we've been very reflective as a, a education community around what our schedule does well for students and what it doesn't. So we're constantly looking to adjust. And I feel confident that this is, um, you know, a big adjustment uh, that has some kind of permanency to it moving forward. So I hope that uh, you find that. Also, I wanted to drop in the, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can drop into the chat um, a, a link. And that link is to our high school um, Q&A uh, page that is available for you to access. So I will drop that link into the chat. It's a very long and ugly link but it will get you to, uh, let's see here. It will get you to, I'm gonna go back and share so I can show you what it will get you to. The link that I dropped in there will get you to this page that has pretty much everything you may want to know about our new bell schedule, but the more, the, and open enrollment courses, some sample schedules, and more importantly, if you do have a question that you didn't feel answered was an answer tonight or just comes into your head in the middle of the night, you jump on this link, you lob your question, and we will uh, be providing you ans answers. And it's nice for us to powwow with around questions that we haven't thought of. We've been doing a pretty good job of anticipating a lot of questions, but it gives us a nice uh, opportunity to powwow around questions that we haven't thought of to really discuss and give you and provide you an accurate and concerted answer. 
So I want to thank everybody for uh, their attendance tonight. Um, and I appreciate uh, the uh, opportunity to share these events with you. I'll keep the uh, Q&A open so that um, I can make sure that we get some of those questions answered before we sign off. Um, and if we don't, um, I'll just try to take a quick perusal to answer, answer verbally here, if I can see any. I think somebody was asking a question around the four by four schedule, and I don't know what our, as you saw, our, our schedule will have uh, four block days on Monday and four block periods on Tuesday and vice versa. Uh, but I think what a question is geared around is if uh, uh, there's concern around us having a four by four schedule, which is like four classes one semester, four cl classes a second semester, different classes. That's not what the schedule is um, about uh, as we move into next year. Uh, and I'm, I can't like predict the future of too far down the line, but I feel like I said, we hope that our proposed schedule now, unless we learn a lot of like glaring challenges and issues that we uh, have some permanency around that schedule. Um, uh, a quick question, a quick answer, answer around transportation. Unlike middle, elementary and the middle school, the high school does not uh, offer general education transportation for students. And I have to tell you that if you've dropped your kids off and commuted um, you know, your students to school and from, you, I can tell you that Park Avenue gets very busy and we really value a uh, timely arrival for our students and their readiness to learn. So we start every day at 8.30 for our students. Um, we really would like them here you know, well before that, I would say, you know, a, a lot of staggered uh, drop off times start around 8.05, 8.10. Um, so just keep, be mindful of that. Um, the, uh, I think there's concern around the, the length of a schedule on a all period anchor day, which is our Fridays. Um, 35 minutes, it seems, it seems too short to get uh, much done. I can tell you with the staff that we have here and the many iterations of various schedules we've had in my short time here, our teachers are very versatile. They're very efficient and effective in whatever time they end up having in, in any classroom environment. There has been a lot of talk around what common practices would be on those anchor day Fridays. Um, a lot of teachers envision that as a, a great day to kind of set the tone and, and prime uh, the students for the week ahead on that Friday. Um, so I, I'm pretty confident that our teachers are very uh, adaptable and adjustable around that. And um, we do have some of our teachers here answering questions in the in the chat too. So I'm going to scroll through and make sure. I think, let's see. Um, there's a question around school sports. I think that was answered formally, but I just want to make sure you know that we'll have a variety of opportunities for students to kind of showcase their talents in an athletic sense, both informally to start with, but in formal tryouts. And that information will be forthcoming. There will be a lot more information around that in our, um, a lot more information around that in our eighth grade family night. And then as we continue in to close out the school year. All right. On that note, again, I appreciate your time. Thank you for being here. And we are so excited to welcome our new group of breakers into the 23-24 school year.